We are also fortunate to have virtually here tonight, Marley Humans, a 2019 and 2015 finalist. She is the author of 15 books of poetry and fiction, including most recently, the 2019 poetry collection, Blood, The Book of the Red King, and the 2020 novel, Karis and the World of Wonders, which was reviewed in NCLR Online 2021. Marley was born in South Carolina, grew up in North Carolina, among other places, and now lives in Cooperstown, New York. She is a frequent NCLR contributor with both her own poetry and writing reviews of other authors' books, and she has been the subject of two interviews, first at NCLR 2004 and another in NCLR Online 2020. Marley graduated from Hollins College, now University, Brown University, and UNC Chapel Hill. She has won the Farrell Sams Award and the Michael Shara Award, both in fiction, and she has been a finalist and a silver winner for the Book of the Year Award from Forward. Let's welcome Marley to the virtual mic. Thank you for that. People who know my poems know that I really like to frolic in meter and rhyme, but the three that I'm gonna to read tonight look very free on the page. They are, however, influenced by parallelism, parallels, parallelism of the King James Bible, and also by Yoruban praise poems. And these are from a manuscript called Praise, which I haven't really done anything with yet, but um, they are poems about people, things, places. The first one I'm going to read is called Night Blooming Sirius. And it is named after the name of a photograph by Sally Mann, Sally Munger Mann. And this is uh, one of Sally's photographs that has been somewhat controversial. In fact, just this very day, I put a note on Facebook about the upcoming reading with an image of Night Blooming Sirius and was immediately put in Facebook jail for 29 days. It's a photograph of Sally Mann's daughter, Jessie. It's a partial torso, torso that kind of goes up, cuts off around the chin, and she has flung around her neck um, the stems and flowers of a night blooming cereus. Um, so it mentions Sally and um, also mentions Garcia Lorca along the way, his trio with earth spirit, angel, and muse. Night blooming Sirius. Painted with fragrance as on some other night dabbled with mud or stippled by river weed, steady with the great slap of scent that holds the torso upright, the already yielding blossoms cool on the landscape of skin and nipple, all woman flowering yet to be. Those ballerina bell skirts, loose and interrogated by the jaws of insects, dangling from the great vegetable torque, lying wide around the child's neck, its eye luring arc of twisted stem, neither more nor less lovely than the lit curve of the girl's upper lip. The petals that once stirred in the large tranquility of moon and starlight are shaped like Japanese tea whisks made from fresh bamboo, the fragrant queen of the night, a mixture of sweetness and subtle notes, faintly fragrant with powder, earth's matcha, faintly fragrant with angelic stardust, faintly fragrant with musing moonlight, moon, smell of tarnished silver and lavender cheese. And also here is the same unticking stillness the same split second of flower grace, the same purity washed in dew, the same reflective beauty that took seven years to achieve, the child muse born seven years back with starlight coming out of her mouth, the royal body sluicing from out of time into time, eternity glistening on her flesh like a second skin of moonshine. Soon the child's body will be a river, her already life long limbs shining in the midst of the dusk and earth, scattered with confetti of petals and sepals of Sirius, all that virgin glow of flower torn and spent. 
All this I praise, the flowers of night, the southern dirt princess, the middle child, Jesse, the eye hungry for wholeness, the work of strong fingers, strong hands, the rowing, the pulling toward moon, the silver gelatin image swimming in night, the body and the blossoms taking shape in liquid, in dark, in secret, a kind of baptism, a kind of salvation, something snatched out of the endless chaotic rain of colors, a kind of burning in the blood, a kind of earth spirit swerving toward our faces. And all of these, the dream of Sally Mann, who I remember barely long ago in school, quick and dark eyed, already a Caesar of pictures, a poet, a player with words. Now she has become something else, has gone into the lunar fields, has fetched back the light and dark petals and the fragrance of skin married to flower, has fished, sieved, netted these things for us from out the welter, the fireworks, the time rain of images, questing on foot and on horseback, going adventuring, determined to charge the goal without the least divine help, yet meeting with a lork and trio in the water meadows, demanding from them a blessing. The angel all fire veined and adrift in grace, the muse all thought and longing for shapeliness, the fey earth spirit, duende glimpsed from the eye's corner or heard within singing, beating a tune in the blood, a song about goblins and sprites and unexpected death, a song that flings a night blooming Sirius around a naked child, a song calling us to be rivers and to thrum with the pulse of salt seas, mapping the branching veins of us in its dark light, gleaming in every cranny and corner of the body, a song that threatens ultraviolence, that emanates ultraviolet, shining its black light onto our little tributaries, our capillaries and cells, fluorescing the minerals of us, singing about the ancient powers of motherhood and petal flush and the risk of childbed and after, the promised girl child who will in time destroy, is destroying the queen, her mother, oh, this murderous longed for girl child with her serious flesh that is white, with her lips that are blood, with her hair as black as the black in the grain of an ebon window frame at which a queen sits leaning, sewing, pricking her finger till the drops of blood mar the snow drifted on the windowsill. In this way, with a trio of helpers, Duende and Angel and Muse, the woman we call Sally Mann, we do not, we cannot know her, snared and jarred for us, the quickly passing hour of the Sirius, its beautifully failing blossoms, its Reina de la Noche dance skirts, its astonishing copia, a gift of short but intense abundance now and forever always, sleeping in fragrant peace on the breast of her child, the child less quickly passing, less frail in duration than night blooming flowers, yet passing surely away, O oh, little child, as do we. Next poem is about an object and I have brought it with me. Here it is. It is a paperweight. I have a number of paperweights and this one um, has beautiful green ground with trees growing out of it, spring trees. And the poem is called Spring Tree Egg. Little world strewn on a table, lampwork flowers and berries sealed in orbs, lampwork root people creeping under glass ground, tangled in the lampwork curls below the flowerings, crane like a fish flying against deep blue, arbutus with leaves mined by insects. Among the paperweights, you, solid in my hand, the size of a large Bombay mango, ovate, oblique, green with a red blush. The earth inside the egg deep, a rich color near malachite, beautifully detailed with tiny mottle and swirl. The outer glass encasing the delicate glass trees, three that make one canopy of petals, the color of redbud blossoms, of leaves, the color of spring, a veil thrown over sinuous branches. 
You are lovely, egg of petals, and I think you must be a world of cherry trees. I would have said red buds, save that your blossoms are interspersed with leaves that are also like flowers. Your roots are visible in the malachite earth, small flowerless canopies, root branches rejoicing in malachite, and on the smooth base is writing, incised and curving, C. Richardson, the name of the woman who dreamed, made this little world of malachite with its fairy canopy. Last night, I dreamed of walking inside you, spring egg, under the C. Richardson trees, though the world outside my window glass is deep and white with crystal. Little world of blossom and root, you are useless in the best possible way, with the uselessness that says, creation is as lovely as stars and streams, telling us that even though a young woman was beaten, her body burned by men, an innocent woman, and this very day, her body shouldered by women to the raw shoveled grave on the other side of the world. Even though, even though this, creation maintains its loveliness as if evermore riding into the spring, helpless against all human desecration, but stainless and sweet. And my last one is in homage to what must have been my favorite book as a small child, uh, Alice in Wonderland. And it's set in a time when we had moved to, my family had moved to Gramercy, Louisiana. Um, it mentions Carol or Dodgson and uh, that's about all you need to know. It mentions um, Jairus, who's 12 year old, Daughter was raised from the dead in the Gospels. Alice. And it has my childhood garden, which was cucumber vines and moonflowers, which were planted in a garden of sugar slack from a refinery. Alice. When the cucumber soared into the live oak tree, vines flying up from sugar slag, when the moonflowers vied with the moon and the branches, when miniature towers and cities spired under our house on piers, I fled in the sunshine with Alice. At night, I flopped on my belly with her books, poring over the big-eyed pictures, longing for the dormouse or the dodo, bird with the figure of a matron and a name like a dodo deca Dodgson stammer. All of us needed the new place with its crawfish castle under the boards, with the gray red bugged beards of the trees, with the plated monsters under false lake, with the shrimp clenching and skittering in the dazzle of rock pools. We had been through too much. We had met a ruthlessness so dire it approached a black region of magic. We had strewn red and white roses inside a cut in the earth we had learned that even a child can go out like a candle, like the passing dream of a red king, hanging there for a time like a ghost before departure, dissolving into the air like a Cheshire smile. What did I know? Everything, nothing. I was going on insufficient facts, three years old and already knowing that I could clasp nothing for keeps, bewildered at sea, going on and not knowing, going and knowing, a bad rhyme. It was easier to play with Alice. It was easier to fly through the mirror or tumble down a burrow than to fathom grown-up replies, all that reeling, all that writhing. Easier to hold the hand of a child who mastered the red and white roses, who made life a game of chess or cards, who walked around the Red King and never woke him. She had been under the ground. She had come back again. She was a miracle, a paper sister who had mastered the art of resurrection, careless and easy, a sister made out of words who led me to the riddle of a writing desk, the pen made from a raven's feather and ink of ichor, mythic blood, or perhaps merely the watery seepage from a wound, who pointed and said to remember, who said to me, this is how how to go. This is how you climb away, run away, find a way, right away back. Alice, little Alice, if not for you, 
How could I have walked under bowls and limbs of towering okra or seen that the moon is only the widespread mouth of a flower? How could I have known that under false lake slept a creature I could draw by filament up from his weird greenish dreams? How could I have dwindled to be curiously small so that I rambled the crawfish castle merging with the damp and the soil? How else could I have become a flower, a pawn, a queen, a riddle, a smile, floating and basking in the outstretched glory of an infinite summer's day? Alice, all these years, and I am still big or small by turns, still glimpsing the world, flash from macrocosm to microcosm, still testing every mirror with the compressive force of my hand, still trusting in shifts and no absolute hardness, still mad about your daughter of gyrus trick, your moxie and metal, your push onward and inward, your big eyes that see every little thing, your adventures under the ground. Thank you.